My name is David Lees. I'm here today to seek for an investment of £225,000 in my company. My company is called Modal. We design and manufacture plasma stands and plasma related mounting systems, primarily for the UK market, but we do have exported worldwide. I'm going to pause for a second. We have, as I said, oh, right. We have, um, this is, as I said, one of our smaller components. We actually manufacture much larger monitor stacks or uh, screen arrays that you might see on big advertising hoardings. And they can be up to six metres long and three metres high with up, up to 60 plasma screens on it. Um, we... Nerves are threatening to wreck David's pitch. He's going to have to pull himself together fast or risk being sent from the den before he's even started. For the investment of £225,000, most of this investment is, be, is being used to invest in, into tooling and capital items to enable us to increase our productivity so we can expand into the European and American markets. We feel as a company we do not have the business acumen to actually go into these markets and this is the primary reason why we're here to see you. It's because that's the skill we lack. Thank you. David's looking for an investment of not just money, but the Dragon's time and experience in his high-end flat-screen TV stand business. He needs the Dragon's to help him increase his turnover and expand into international markets. David, can I just make it clear where I am on this? You were really specific at the beginning that you needed a Dragon who had international yes. business experience, which I, I don't, and I'm just going to declare myself out so you know where I am. So you... Thank you for listening, Matt. It's a poor start for David. By making his requirements for an investor so specific, he's immediately alienated Rachel Elnor. Will any of the other dragons be interested? Oh, David, my name's Theo. Hello, Leo. Um, what, where's the business operate from? Um, West London. West London. How many employees has it got? It has me, myself. Me, myself and I? Right, that's all it. Three of uh, you. All three of me, yes, just and, myself. And where do you operate from? Uh, we have a 2,000 square foot unit in Hedgeley, which is a village just outside of Beaconsfield. And you go there, unlock in the morning, all on your own, not be no mates, yes. right? And play football in there? What do you uh, do? No, I work about a 70 hour week. I am responsible. Uh, what we have is a network of manufacturers. It's so who does it? So you do no manufacturing, just components? Yes. What were you doing before you didn't done this? Uh, I was the development de director of a medical systems research and development company. Uh, I was a salaried director. I worked there for five years. I had three patents accepted and about 16 registered designs accepted. But the reason I left there was quite simply because I had, as I said, I'd raised their turnover by $19 million and I'd doubled their share price since I was there with the new products we'd launched. I asked the company to actually become a shareholder and they refused, so I served my six months' notice and left. And then went to do what? It started Modal. David has an impressive track record as a top engineer in a multi-million dollar company. Peter Jones wants to know if he's continued this success working for himself. Da David, what's the cost of that product in front of us now? That product there, uh, actual cost is... ..264, I think. So about 260 odd yes. pounds. And what would that sell for? 582. I sell about, this year I will be selling over 300 of these units. So you'll sell 300 of these yes. at an average margin of about £250? Yes, I, I work on a 100% markup, so if it costs, see if this costs £100, I'll sell it for 200 David's already making an impressive profit margin on his niche products, and his company is in good shape, but he has ambitious plans for expansion. Your goal is to retool so you can broaden. Yes. And if I understood you correctly, your new kit, the retooled stuff, is going to cost you less to produce, therefore yes. you can sell it for a lower price yes. and therefore offer it to more people. Yes. 
Okay, what is the size of the larger commercial market that you aspire to enter? The whole AV market in the UK is three billion. I'm sorry, the whole AV stand market? No, the whole AV market. I don't give a <laughs> the whole AV market. What about the <laughs> AV stand market? Um, I would say there's probably about 100,000 stands sold in the UK alone this, last year. In the commercial market? Yes, in the commercial market. And you sold how many? Uh, we sold about 250. So you sold 250 of the 10? Yes. Of the how many? 100,000. Thank you. Um, you sold 250 of the 100,000. Yes. What portion of that 100,000 unit market will be your accessible market after your costs have dropped? I would say I would be able to pitch to 90% of that market. Okay. After investment, David's potential market would be massively increased, transforming his business and making it a tempting prospect for any investor. With this in mind, Theo Pafitis wants to check how much profit he's made in the last three years. What were the profits for two, three and four? I think 2002 was 23,000 pounds. Okay, and three? Uh, that was about 46 to 48,000 pounds. And four? That was 67,000 pounds. And when did you finish five? We've, we've, we've finished 2004, 2005 was, was finished in April. OK, so your year ends April yep. and you made £67,000 profit... Yes. ..on £250,000 turnover. £225,000. £256,000, my point. £256,000, oh, yes. so around two fifty. Yeah. You made £67,000. Yes, clear profit. Clear profit. What's your projections for your next year? We expect to turn over um, half a million pounds for... No, just profit. Just give me the pre-tax pre profit. Pre-tax profit, we hope to make about 120, something like that. Double it again. £120,000 yeah. pre-tax profit. Yeah. It's clear that David has huge belief in the success of his business and sees its profits doubling in the next year. Doug Richard, who hasn't invested yet in this series, doesn't share David's confidence. Three years from now, maybe you'll be how big, according to your According to my turnover? estimations, we should be turning over about seven million a year. Seven million a year yeah. in three years. Yes, that's a rather big jump. It's a from very big jump. Fifty to five hundred next year, without the marginal investment. Yeah. Um, I, I'm concerned that you would not actually achieve these volumes that you seek to achieve. I think that it takes more than. Um, I think it's going to take more than just money to get you to the next stage. I think it's going to take a full-on management team, production system, distribution. I think there's a, a rather large body of work ahead, and that is, offers considerable risk. For those reasons, I'm out. Two dragons are now out. Despite David's track record, Doug Richard believes it'll take so much to achieve his ambitious plans that it would make an investment of £225,000 a huge risk. Duncan Bannatyne, though, wants to know if he's ever found anyone else willing to back his plans. Have you tried borrowing the money from the bank? Yes. They said yes. They said yes? Yes. So you could borrow it? Yes. Why don't you? Because I, I, I said I'm intrinsically a one-man band. Mm. I run a very effective yep. business. But what I don't have, I have incredible engineering skill. I lack business acumen. Now, I, as I said, I have I two... don't think you do, because I think you've done terrifically well, if these figures are right. I don't think you like the business acumen. Duncan Bannatyne is impressed with David's achievements so far, but still needs to be convinced that he has the vision to make his high-end TV stand business a multi-million pound concern. What's the exit strategy? We've had three offers to purchase a company. The most recent was Panasonic Corporate Systems of America. How much? 3.25 million, with me working for them for one year to do the handover. They offered you 2.5 million pounds? 3.25. 3.25, they offered yes. you 3.25 million pounds. Million, yeah. Now that has been a verbal uh, negotiation and we have both agreed on how we'd like to go forward. But what I don't want to do is actually put that in writing until I have someone that has the business skills to negotiate that deal properly. With a massive company like Panasonic already interested in buying David out for millions, making an investment has suddenly become incredibly tempting. Is Duncan Bannatyne about to make his first investment of the series? I'd be, I'd be wanting to invest all the money, the 225000 Yeah. But I'd want 50% of the company. 50. Why would you want 50? Because I think that would give me a sufficient return for my investment. You think so? Yep. I think in LS and that wouldn't give me a sufficient return. 
David came in looking to sell 15% of his company. Duncan Bannatyne's offered all of the money, but wants half of David's business. Can he justify asking for such a high percentage? How would you provide me with the necessary business skills to get the business, you know, to actually help me create the increased turnover for Europe and the United States? Most of my ability that we have shown over many companies to buy in management and buy in all that information, yep. buy in all that knowledge. Okay. It's all buyable. I'm fully aware of that, yes. That's what I'm really here out shopping trying to do. But Duncan Bannatyne isn't the only dragon who's seen the potential. Well, I'm very interested. Uh, my offer to you would be practically identical to Duncan's. Yes but it would be no less than 50%. What would you bring to the party? Uh, bringing in my business expertise. Yes. I'm a, I'm a pretty successful shopkeeper. Yeah. Um, not in uh, this sector. I'm in uh, pencils and lingerie. Okay. Stationery and lingerie, basically. But uh, I know the sector very well. I'm an early adopter of all the products that we talked about earlier. Um, and you'd get my business ability. Mm -hmm. David, well, you just had two offers. I know. Are you accepting them? There's another one to go. Do you have anything to say? I'm going to pull out. You're going to pull out. You don't need six people involved. Peter Jones is out. Will David be willing to sell half of his equity to get the expertise he needs to transform his company? It's the hardest decision of his business life. Would you go to 49%? No. Why not? Why do you ask? Well, because at the moment, I've, I've spent my whole life being an engineer. I've spent my whole life being paid £250 for a patent that has earned companies millions. Yep. You are just taking that little bit too much for what, my whole life. What difference does the 1% make to you? I don't understand it. It's psychological. That's all it is. No, it's it's a gesture. Yeah, no, 50%. 50%. Uh, I'm going to stick to that, and then for exactly the same reason. I'll make it slightly more complicated or slightly easier for you, depending on how your views are at the moment. At the moment, you've received an offer from me, and you've received an offer from Theo. I'll give you a third option. I'll split the money with Theo. You're going to get 225,000 for 50% yeah. of the company. Will you take it from me or him, or a split between us? You get two for the price of one. With the two of you involved at 50%, I will accept that offer. Okay, got it done. Congratulations. Well done. David has done it. He's parted with much more of his company than he intended, but has twice the business experience. With Theo Pathetis and Duncan Bannatyne investing the £225,000 he came for. There's plenty of people who will pay for a premium, decent I product. They agree completely. A decent premium product at a decent price. I think you can um, capture a big slug of the market. Do you know what you're actually going to be doing? You guys are going to be going through a management team building exercise. Yeah. Well, David, who could have known there was so much money in uh, plasma screen stands? Whew, are you pleased with the offer? Uh, I am very pleased with the offer. One of the important things is there's, there's three partners or three people involved, which means we can never get into deadlock unless both of them disagree with me, which might happen, but I, I don't think so, because their expertise is business. But you have effectively now sort of given away half of your business, your baby, really, haven't you? I have. That's a huge amount. But this as I lot. said, half of nothing is nothing, but half of a million pounds is very nice. Thank you very much. Now, do you think they understand how much work you want them to do? I was a little bit confused I, Yes, about I think that, that, that's the shock they're going to get, because I work very, very hard to make this business and I'm going to expect them, especially owning a quarter of it, to elite work equally as hard to actually prove to me that they can do the job because but this was a two-way interview. Are you happy or are you feeling, oh, I might have made a mistake now? I might have made a mistake now, but I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, very well done. We're Thanks happy a lot. Too.